Hey guys, Daniel here from Team Creepers, back again for some product opening! So we are going to open these four pieces of product that we got from the Yu-Gi-Oh! Community Day out in the Windsor offices. Everything else I have left is going to be added to prizes for events that I am running in the near future with Fur House Kids Cards Club. So without further ado, let's start from the oldest going forward. So Layer of Darkness. So, Layer of Darkness is the second most recent structure deck, I believe. It came out just around the time of Nationals season this year. And it features... Uh, it, it's actually a retrain deck, so it is a structure deck R. Um, but we never got the original deck in Europe, and I am also destroying the box, so I am very sorry. Okay, so first things first, we have... The teaming of this deck is all based around trap cards that tribute your opponent's monsters, and then some other effects that synergize with those. So Lilith is probably one of the strongest cards in the deck. Uh, she allows us, so it's Lilith, Lady of Lament. She allows us to tribute herself, or if we have, if we have uh, the field spell, and then we can tribute any dark monster, including our opponents, as a quick effect to choose three traps from our deck, and our opponent selects one randomly, and we get to set it to our field. It's really strong. Uh, this is such a good card. And then Darkest Diablos, Lord of the Lair. This card is one of the retrains, so the original Diablos was part of the original deck, which only Japan got, because it contained Crush Card virus, virus, which we didn't get until we got it as a prize card. So yeah, these two cards are really strong. Uh, joined with Arima and Lair of Darkness, they build the kind of the core cards of this deck. So Arima the Wicked Warden, we can discard him to search a uh, layer of darkness from our deck, or else we can draw a card. Um, yeah, so we can discard him to add layer of darkness, or we can tribute a dark monster, draw one card, or if we tribute a dark with 2k or more defense, um, we can... Sorry, if he tributes the monster other than himself, we can add anything we want. Uh, then we have Layer of Darkness. This is the field spell. It was seen briefly in Striker. Um, and it also got played in Lair and Infer Infernoids. Really strong thing with this is, first off, you contribute your opponent's cards. So, for example, Lair Infernoids are able to activate the Infernoid monster's effects. Tribute the opponent's card as cost. Um, and then you can even give your opponent tokens so that they can't use their Sky Striker spells. But the tokens don't summon until the end of the turn. But yeah, so those cards are all really cool. Uh, very happy to have more copies of them. There is Grinning Grave Virus. I write this card very lowly. Uh, the problem is that your opponent picks the cards. Um, and giving your opponent the option to choose what they want to do is never a great thing. Duke Shade, uh, the Sinister Shadow Lord. This card got hyped for ages. Uh, Diablos, King of Diabus, the original Diablos. Light Sword, King of the Underworld, also from the original deck. Prometheus, King of the Shadows, also from the original deck. Um, we got these in Gold 4, I believe, which was Haunted Mine. Then Archie and Emperor, this card's a big guy. It's kind of the Mega Monarch, it's a really nice reprint. This guy has been played every now and then. Legendary Magic Garzat, Vanity's Fiend, another awesome reprint. Mist Archfiend, Infernal Dragon, Archfiend Cavalry, Stygian Street Patrol, Phantom of Chaos is one of my favorite cards. This card just has so much potential behind it to do really silly things. And everybody loves silly things. Uh, Plague Wolf, Fiendish Rhino Warrior, cannot send your Darkest Diablos, but is really good in Burning Abyss. Uh, Curry Bandit, Tour Guide from the Underworld, once again, fantastic in Burning Abyss. Absolute King Backjack, one of my favorite cards. Rolling Creebro, because... This is a Creebros video after all. Recurring Nightmare, Allure of Darkness, Hand Destruction, Foolish Burial Goods. Uh, Boogie Trap, Fires of Doom Day, Veil of Darkness. Those cards are all not very uh, impactful cards in my opinion. Crush Card Virus, this is of course the updated card text. Deck Devastation Virus, Radicator Epidemic Virus. This card's insane. Uh, when this gets resolved against you, you generally are losing that game. Full Force Virus. Dark Light, Trap of Darkness, Mind Crush is really nice. Uh, Rise to Full Height is decent. 
uh, Curse of Darkness and Sinister Yoshiaru, and then a Torment token, and a little Duel Links card. Yeah, I really like this deck. Um, unfortunately, the Lair of Darkness engine just doesn't present enough value for kind of building a deck around at the moment, but it has so many interesting cards that I very much enjoy getting to see them again. Okay, so second thing we're going to open is Cybernetic Horizon Special Edition. So again, Cybernetic Horizon is a set that contains Boral Sword. It also contains cards like Danger Nessie, Danger Bigfoot, Danger Jackalope. I'd love to get a Jackalope because I only have one at the moment and I have most of the other Danger cards. So first things first, let's look at our promos. We have number 38, Hope Harbinger, Titanic Galaxy. This card was really good, uh, particularly in Blue Eyes format. Um, you could overlay to have a negate, and then I believe Pepe also played this, where you would overlay Ignister and Dynaster to make a Hope Harbinger as an extra negate. So you'd end on like Cyber Dragon Infinity, Hope Harbinger, and something else. And then Eternal Galaxy, uh, which is Galaxy Vote on support card, and it lets you. Oh, that's pretty cool. Target an XC's monster you control. If you control a Photon on our Galaxy card and special summon from your extra deck, a Photon on our Galaxy that is four ranks higher than that target by using it as a material. That's kind of cute. Unless you rank up your fours into eights. Uh, but yeah, let's just get into the Cybernetic Horizon packs. So we have Crusadia Draco. These are English packs. We have Restoration Point Guard. We have World Legacy's Memory. I like this card a lot. Uh, we have Cosmo Brain, we have White Stingray, we have Circle Cycle of the World, which is the ritual spell for the retrained uh, Demise and Rune. We have Center Frog, and we have Crusadia Maximus. Crusadia Maximus is cool. Uh, I really like the art of the Crusadia deck. I'm not giving it a try, but yeah, the cards look really cool. I love following the current storyline. Uh, we have Demise, Agent of Armageddon, Dragoonity Coast, Metaphys Ascension, Renewal of the World, which is a trap card for that archetype, Divine Serpent Ge. Uh, this is all I need. The video can end now. Divine Serpent Ge is very cool. Don't read the card though. It's not good, but it's very cool. Cluster Congestor, Link Devotee, and. Ooh, we have a Link Monster. We have a Terrifying Toddler of Torment which is the best name of the set. And we have a Vorticular Drumgun, which I have never played, and I forget its effects. It's a link tree that requires three dark dragon monsters. I'm not playing that anytime soon. Unless you draw a card when it's summoned, though. Hmm. But also turns off the monster zones. Seems kind of questionable. We have Shield Handler. We have Zero Extra Link, we have Universal Adapter, we have Crusadia Arborea, we have Demise, Supreme King of Armageddon, Crusadia Reclusia, Boral Regenerator, Rune, Angel of Oblivion, and Umber Mage, the Elemental Lord, whose name I just destroyed there, but uh, yes, he is the final Elemental Lord that we did not have. Um, that's cool for the, uh, Element Saber deck, but not something I'm super crazy about. So we got three supers there, which is sad times. Uh, I really like the art sandies. The, uh, the artwork of the main set packs has been, like, really good as of late. The whole world chalice arc. So, moving on. We will look at structure deck Zombie Horde. So Zombie Horde is actually one that I'm super happy to get. I only have a single copy of this, and I like having kind of three copies of every deck. Just so you have staples. You know, you never know when something could become good, and the zombie stuff, depending on the format, certainly has the potential to uh, be relevant in a format. So what is cool about this deck? So it's another structure deck reloaded. Um, it's based on the original Zombie World deck, which was based around the Red Eyes Zombie Dragon. So here we have Red Eyes Zombie Necro Dragon. I believe that deck came out around the same time as Crossroads of Chaos, which was when 
Plague Spreader and all that sort of zombie support came out. There was a brief period where zombies and plants were like quite scary. I say that not having played competitively during the time, but only read articles. So I could be slightly biased. Okay, so we have a red eyes zombie necro dragon. This card's insane and sealed. Like if you resolve this card and have zombie world on the field, you're in a really good spot. Uh, we have Tatsunekro, which works similar to Tatsunoko, but banishes cards. I'm not crazy about this. I'm sure there's something that makes it better, but um, having used it in the sealed deck, it seemed reasonably poor with the deck most of the time. Doom King Ballardruck. I really like this card. It's inspired by Irish mythology. Um, and yeah, it's it's like a super impactful card. If it becomes relevant, it will be really strong. Uh, we'll just have to see if we get to a format where this card can be played, because at high level competitive, its effects are really impactful. Uh, it's just getting into it, that's the problem. Necro World Banshee lets us search uh, Zombie World. Again, Irish mythology character, so I'm quite happy to see that in the game. And yeah, this, this card's really decent. Glow Up Bloom, this card's quite scary. Uh, so it lets us search zombies. Um, or if we have Zombie World, we can special summon the zombie that we search. It, it banishes itself, but it's, you know, it's a callback to Glow Up Bulb, and once we get Chris Tron Needle Fiber, this card has a lot of potential. Uh, Kasha, this card is crazy in the sealed deck format for this deck. Um, you're not going to play it, really, in a competitive event outside of that, but it's a really cool card. I like it a lot. Uh, Red Eyes Zombie Dragon, really good and sealed as well. Malevolent Mech, Goken, Endless Decay, Paladin of the Cursed Dragon, one of my favorite cards. Immortal Ruler, Zombie Master, Tristan, Knight of the Underworld, Mizuki, Gozuki, Shutan Doji, Pyramid Turtle, Goblin Zombie, Isold, Bell of the Underworld, the inferior Isold too. This is old. Uh, Shiranui Solitaire. Uni Zombie. Marionette Might. Beast of the Pharaoh. Scape Ghost. Zombie Necronize. This card's insane. Uh, if, if zombies become good, even if you're not playing zombies, this card is like super relevant. Because it just needs a level 5 or higher to be on either side of the field. So if your opponent controls a big zombie, you can just zombie necronize their guy. But we do have like mind controls and stuff, so there is a lot of redundancy. Uh, zombie Power Struggle, Zombie World, Overpowering Eye, Book of Life, Call of the Mummy, Foolish Burial, good reprint, Monster Gage, Drag Down into the Grave, also a good reprint, Burial from a Different Dimension, Shared Ride, this card's fantastic reprint, really important in Striker Mirror Matches, Return of the Zombies. Uh, I wasn't super impressed with this card. Haunted Shrine, on the other hand, was insanely good in the sealed. Tramp of the Imperial Tomb. This card's impossible to resolve. Needlebug Nest. I have played this many times before, uh, particularly in things like Lightsworn Rulers. It was a common that was really hard to get for the longest time until it was reprinted in, I believe, Wing Raiders, or else High Speed Riders. I, I can never tell those sets apart. Uh, Metaverse. Um, we still have two terraforming, so this card isn't as relevant, but, you know, it's, it's a good reprint. It's important in Altergeist when they set their field spell, or when they, you get to pop their secret village and they just metaverse and replace it. Uh, Anti-Spell Fragrance and Mask of Restrict, and those are our cards, and we have a dual links card in this one as well. In the previous one, it was Yami Yugi and Jaden, and this one has Yami Yugi and Yusei, because... This deck came out after the Yu Gi Oh 5D's patch for the game. But yeah, I'm really happy with that deck. Uh, I think it's a really good deck and has a lot of potential. Um, but even just in terms of reprints, I, I think it's definitely worth, worth picking up if you don't have anti spells, shared rides, things like that. Because they can be quite awkward to find, even though their value might not be super high. Finally, we have our Soul Fusion Special Edition. I would love to get a Summon Sorceress from here, but I will always be happy with Easold. Uh, I have a set of Easolds, so Summon Sorceress is preferred just due to not owning one at the moment. And we have Summon Sorceress. Nice. Uh, so I don't know what Summon Sorceress pairs with. I think she pairs with Roxy's. 
but I could be wrong. Yeah, so Prank Kids Roxy's and Summon Sorceress. Prank Kids, of course, just won YCS Milan, which was the weekend before this event. In fact, I flew from Milan to Dublin and then straight to Windsor. And yeah, Summon Sorceress, of course, very hyped card, very powerful. Uh, so yeah, that's I'm super happy with that. And now we have three packs of Soul Fusion. So Soul Fusion, I would love to see Colossus. I would love to see Danger Suchinoku. And I also love Noble Knights. Until Noble Arms are needed once again. Card's insane. Impact Im, Impcantation Bookstone. Uh, Giant Ballpark. Salmon Great Giant Jaguar. Salmon Great Heat Leo. Salmon Great Falco. Dino Wrestler. Sisto... Gosor. These guys are real awkward to say their names. Concentrating Current. And... Mystric Hodler. Holder. So nothing super exciting in that first pack. With the exception of Until Noble Arms are needed once again. Now this card's good. World Dino Wrestling. Uh, currently seeing play in Striker. Uh, Agav Dragon. Alvis, the Nordic Alfar, Gookie Pole, DDD, Super Doom King, Purple Armageddon, Diplexer Chimera, seems like we have a lot of fusions here, Salomon Great, Emerald Eagle, Orchestrid Einstadts, and Heritage of the Chalice. Nice. Uh, this card's insane. Th this card fixes so many of the problems that the Noble Knight deck did have. And it also just has gorgeous artwork. We have Lancelot, Guinevere, and Archer. I think that's Lancelot. It could be Constantine. Or it could be Wars. I think it's actually meant to be Wars. Never mind. But still, regardless, I like the artwork a lot. I'll need to double check which knight that is. Uh, Galaxy Brave. We saw a lot of Galaxy and Vuitton support in recent slats. Uh, Dino Re Wrestler, King T, Rexatile. Rise of the Salmon Great, Salmon Great Gift, Orcust, Brass Bombard, Concentrating Current, Patchwork Fluffle, Salmon Great Sanctuary, and finally, Danger, Motman. Yeah, this card's good. Sees play in the Danger deck. Uh, so overall, from two special editions, we pulled one Ultra Rare, which is kind of sad times, but hey. We got a Heritage and a Summon Sorceress and a Roxy's. I'm quite happy with that. Thank you very much for joining me with this unboxing. And have a lovely day. See you guys soon.